Are we ready? Okay. We're very glad to have His Grace with us today. I think he attends the servant meeting more than a lot of us. So thank you again, Sayyidina, for blessing us. Uh, God willing, uh, hopefully many years. <laughs> Uh, maybe just a couple. Just a <coughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His grace and His blessing, now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. Um, usually it's customary in the sermon meetings to speak about the Pauline epistles. But sometimes we make an exception for Nehemiah. And I always say that at least once a year we review uh, the book of Nehemiah uh, because he is a model servant. Um, and there are many lessons, not just when you're building a building, but when you are establishing a service, any new service, that the, the book is full of um, guidelines for us uh, in case um, there, there's always differences with the Orthodox Study Bible and the New, new King James. Yes, you know the differences, right? With the Septuagint. So in the Old Testament, when it comes to the Old Testament, especially in English, the translations are slightly different, not just in the Psalms, but in many of the books, and even there are some chapter variations. So um, I was trying to conv convince a group of college youth to switch. But like, no, we have our Bibles already. <laughs> so we try to get them young be because, uh, as, as you'll see sometimes, the variations are very helpful. I was talking to one of the servants the other day, and there was a, a verse that always challenged him. Uh, in the old, he didn't understand how wh what it meant. It didn't make sense for him. He said when he opened in an Orthodox, study, he's like, "This is exactly what he was searching for." Be like I said, there's some subtle uh, variations, and there's many of these. You have a question already? You have the uh, verse. The three days. It's the three days yeah, so that, that's one example um, about uh, one of the differences. Um, so in the Septuagint, and there's a debate, especially in that one, that's not very clear because we have uh, the tradition of both 40 day fasts and three day fasts. And so it seems at somewhere along the point, one of the transcribers adjusted <laughs> from the three to the 40. In the tradition of the Syrian Orthodox Church and in our church, it's always a three-day fast. When it has 40 days, it points, of course, to the fast of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's a type of Christ. So both work, but um, if you want, like, historical, <laughs> which one made sense? When you see the fast that they had declared in those days, it was for all the people and all the animals and the children. So it seems to make more, it's more probable that it was uh, three, just more practical, and that was, like, strict, no food, drink, or anything. Um, but that's a good that's a good example. That's that's one of the hardest. <laughs> but there are other ones more obvious. So say, for example, in the book of Daniel, uh, the additions to the book of Daniel, which we pray in the Bright Saturday. The reason why we pray them in the Bright Saturday is to um, proclaim that they are part of the Bible, because what's part of the Bible is used in the service. So they added a lot of those readings during um, Bright Saturday as well as the book of Revelation, because there were people questioning the book of Revelation. Um, uh, it's, so when they made the selection, first they used to read all the Bible, when they made the selection, they selected those important, uh, but organized them in different, in different ways. And so um, the praise of the three holy youth, which we say every Tazbaha, is from the, the, the Greek. You don't find it in the, in the, in the um, Hebrew. So... Okay, the questions before we start. <laughs> okay. The book of Nehemiah. Um, I think there's a critical time in history in which the world is really in need of good leadership. And it's not just um, in politics, in the church, in business, in education, in all fields. And even I w we were starting a new program on leadership, and when I was researching, I found hundreds <laughs> of different programs and and it's also because the world is changing so quickly how to deal with millennials, how to deal with the circumstances of COVID and post-COVID. Like there's so many challenges facing the world that the leadership 
when it's not strong, you see it crumbles very quickly. And so um, uh, always this book um, helps to kind of guide us um, even in our own service. I won't go through all the 13 chapters, but in general, you see that there are different um, uh, blessings, different themes that you can find in each of the chapters, right? The character of a good servant, and that's what we'll speak a little bit about, how to prepare oneself for servant, that's more for the servant prep. Um, effective service in the middle of the service, when there are challenges facing the service, I externally, chapter 4, or even internally with the group within the church, uh, chapter 5. And if you go through the rest of the books, you see that these, the vir virtues that God kind of equips the servant with helps in many fruitful dimensions uh, later on. Um, <clears throat> Nehemiah is situated in a very important part of the history of Israel. Um, I was just telling uh, if you haven't seen the news today, Israel is going through <laughs> its own challenges this morning with uh, facing war. Um, but uh, the destruction of Jerusalem that took place in the time of Jeremiah, um, where he was called the weeping prophet, and the, you know, the, the ones that were captured were taken uh, back to Babylon. So that t that's the book of Daniel in the, with the three holy youth. And then when they get the permission to return in the time of Zerubbabel in 1st Ezra, the rebuilding of the temple in 1st and 2nd Ezra, the rebuilding of the walls in Nehemiah. So it comes towards the end of this new um, construction, but you can still see what, what Nehemiah's leadership, when we see the challenges, that just because they started the building the temple and started rebuilding the walls, it doesn't mean the challenges are not there. Every servant, every leader faces different challenges and so the the unique thing i think about the book of nehemiah is that you see the process very clear <laughs> for the servant between the challenge and and how god guides to overcome the different ones so this is um, a modern uh, rendition uh, of the city ancient city of jerusalem and they had d different walls you know the first second third and how that they were rebuilt and so um it's kind of hard to see but um, in the ancient city, you know, Golgotha is right here. And um, that was outside what's called the second wall. Um, uh, and what, what later on, after now in modern Jerusalem, it's in the middle. So it fulfilled the prophecy, the builders rejected, uh, became the chief cornerstone. What was outside now is in the center. Um, and so that's uh, just an ex one example about the fulfillment and how important these walls were. Um, the work and mission <coughs> of Nehemiah were in these uh, walls. And even if you go, I think there was uh, some of you who came with us, that there are different layers of history that are mentioned in these walls. And uh, some of, in especially this area, there are some of them that were rebuilt during that time of Neem, that still exist uh, today. The contribution of the servant, especially who's faithful, it's still, it's, it's amazing. It still is, uh, uh, endures for many, many generations. And there are some things that even the kings of Israel did. You have no idea where it is, if, if it, <laughs> don't know where that is <laughs> today. Um, so we can start, uh, you have helping readers. Do we assign? You're selecting, yes, self-selecting. We can read. Just the first three chapters. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First three, yes. First three verses. No. So this is the announcement, the news, the bad news, like maybe if you haven't heard about the war, <laughs> I, kind of, I didn't go in detail. But this was the announcement that was approximately in 587 BC uh, when the Persian Empire um, 
allows uh, the Jews to return. Um, and this, uh, like I said, uh, to um, that reaches Nehemiah kind of uh, initiates the whole journey. And one of the questions we ask, well, what's different about Nehemiah than the others? Because they all received the same news. Why did Nehemiah it affect him differently? It's, I'm jumping. Any guess? I, I know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. And some of the servants know. Because, yes? Okay. But you, as servants, will kind of, I hope, <laughs> identify this, because it's very important for the service. And if you are building the wall, you could build the wall maybe with a little bit of this, but you can't guide other people to build the wall without this. And that's the difference with Nehemiah. See if I, maybe we can jump a little. The answer? <laughs> the call. Nehemiah understood from this that he was called for this purpose. And that's why it affected him during that time, like he was moved, as we will see, um, devastated. We can read actually the f verse 4. You read it for us. Okay, so this is how it affected Nehemiah, right? We all get bad news or challenging news or different situations, but his response demonstrates part of the call. Now, there are different types of calls that we have. They have the burning heart, the burning bush, and the burning house or the burning city. <laughs> the burning heart is when someone realizes what they must do, and, and it kind of grows and increases in their heart. For a long time, oh, sorry, this is um, so when the when the passion that kind of drives us to do a certain um, work or certain service, you can't sleep. You're trying to sleep and continues to come right, and determination. Every time you have a conversation, youth meeting, whatever, it continues to be a driving force in your life and in others. And not only that, when you start dealing with other people, you see more and more the need for this type of service. That's um, a call from, uh, sorry, I don't know what's going on with <laughs> uh, the burning heart. This is what, similar to what happened with David when he heard about Goliath. And he couldn't understand why the rest of the people are not fighting. He said, any one of you can. But he understood I have to do it, and he also understood when they asked him, but you can't, you're a little kid, you can't do this. Um, he said, no, I have the experience. Um, so he has the conviction, and he knows that he's equipped, sorry, by the grace of God to do this. The, the, uh, this is going to... So... <clears throat> something off. <laughs> and jump. Um, so that's the burning heart. The second type, which is the burning bush, so it's not always within, but can be outside. The burning bush was probably one of the most important periods in Moses' life because it is in the middle of his life, and it's a transformation of what he knew before, that he was called to save and to liberate his people. Right? That's why he killed Egyptian, and he thought that was the way to do it. <laughs> He had 40 years to think about <laughs> uh, in the wilderness and taking care of the sheep. And probably he thought, you know, this is a good time for retirement. 80 years, uh, just kind of conclude and just live a nice, peaceful life. But the burning bush changed that and then put in perspective all of his past and revealed to him the future. So the burning bush, sometimes we have this type of call and it's undeniable. It, it, it is direct and individual and has a clear purpose and vision. Moses didn't come out of the burning bush thinking, you know, what should I do? <laughs> he didn't have to call his uncle or someone else for advice. He didn't search in the scriptures. It was very clear what 
was his, there was no scripture, <laughs> um, but it was very clear what he had to do. Different maybe for Nehemiah, he, he when he was fasting and praying and searching and asking, it was kind. It was a different revo- like process of discovery. The burning bush, there is no like I said, no doubt. There's a little wiggle room. Like you can't say, okay, let's let's do it next year. You know, why not in another place? That option is not there. Um, <clears throat> and part of the burning bush, which I love so much, um, is verse 2. Uh, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then he says, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Do you know why that verse is there? Why Moses is saying, telling us that he did this? It's quieter than the youth group that we had. <laughs> Either contemplation or confusion. <laughs> Mystery. He didn't have to, right? It's, but that detail is very important. It tells us that not just to identify when God works in our life, sometimes very strange things happen and we walk, that we say, oh, that was nice, and we tell other people, there was a bu- bush that was burning. Yeah. Take a picture. <laughs> but, the, but this reflection, this gazing and search, is he's searching for what? He knows, he can identify. This bush to reveals Moses three things. Who God is, so he says, I am. Who is he? And his will, his, his um, purpose and his mission, Moses' mission. So the three are hidden in there. So when Moses is going to the bush, he is discovering the three at the same time. And our call, if it's like the burning bush, it's a revelation in that sense of who God is and who we are and what we are created for like what what is why are we here so this is it starts with curiosity and amazement and wonder and revelation of god leads to revelation of self and the work in which we have to do now nehemiah was neither of the two he didn't have a burning bush as we know he heard about the burning of jerusalem he didn't have uh the same uh, call as in burning heart he had that but that's not what motivated him. It was the burning city. Um, and that was circumstances that was not brought about by him. It was revealed to him. And uh, uh, this, like I said, was um, led to the distress and reproach and all of this uh, that's mentioned in the verse uh, 3 and 4. Um, <coughs> I, I should have reviewed these. Okay. Similar we look uh, at Esther. Esther's call was very similar. Um, The burning house, which was the people of Israel, were all affected. And Esther didn't really want to be in this situation. She tried to get out of it. Similar, um, uh, Nehemiah didn't react that way. Moses at one point said, you know, there's other people that, they're well more well-spoken. I'm I'm a little bit, you know, if I can be excused, have someone else, right? Like in the service, like, just excuse me in the service. <laughs> and Esther tried to get out. But um, thank God, right, when Mordecai learned that this happened, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, which is similar to Nehemiah, and went out into the midst of the city. He cried with a loud and bitter cry. He went this far. Now, um, when he was mourning, his mourning is different than Nehemiah. He knew that the, the solution was not in his hands. He was also s- very compromised with his, the work that he could do. So even he doesn't have the power and authority to do it. And so he recognizes, even though there's a burning city, it's not my, my uh, solution. But Esther, she, although she was deeply distressed, she needed some pushing, right? So he said... If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. He told her, if you don't do this, God is going to send someone else. What does that mean for you? If this is my purpose, my mission, my service, there's a, there's a problem. <laughs> that means I'm not fulfilling my call. 
and God will use someone else, which always happens, right? If we flee from the Sunday school service, which I never happened, <laughs> there are some people, right? God will send other people, but he wants to use us, and he wants to bless us in our work. Um, so uh, that's why he kind of told her, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Basically, all of the good days that she had in the palace and all the things thereafter, we know now, from hindsight, it was for this point that God put her there. And Nehemiah realized the same thing. I am in the house of the king. I was chosen for this so that I can go to... So it made his life very clear. <laughs> very clear when they're obedient. The same for Moses. The burning bush revealed to him, oh, I'm not supposed to be just staying in the desert with a sheep, and I wasn't supposed to be in the palace affair. All of that was preparation for what's coming now. That is what the, the revelation kind of gives for us the clear call and direction. Now, um, the response, how we respond to the call, um, when we see with Abraham, it says, here I am, and Jacob says, here I am, and Moses repeats the same. Th there is this declaration, because wh what does God say from the burning bush? He says, who are you? I am who I am. I am the being. I am the one who is. There's no good translation for it, because it is ambiguous, <laughs> because it describes the name of God. So I'm pretty sure Moses afterwards paused and said, well, you are, <laughs> so w w what? And that is the revelation, God, when God reveals. So, but the response is very similar but different. Like when, you, when, because God calls with the name twice. Do you know why? Like when you're calling your kids <laughs> once, twice, maybe three, four times. But when it's two names right after each other, especially in Scripture, that is a call to do some, not just call, where are you? What do you want? No, it's a call that you, there's something very important <laughs> that you have to c come for. So Samuel, Samuel, Moses, Moses, Abraham, Abraham. Um, and so this calling, when, it, when it's one name, two, he says, I call you Paul, uh, Cephas, I call you Peter. Right, so it's just one, but but this is part of that revelation of who you are. This mission, that's when you get the double kind of instruction, and so they're just to say, "Here I am," right? Because you are the one who is, and I'm here so you can give me that I, that uh, that understanding of who I am, that meaning and that purpose. Um, okay. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And as we heard, we have the calling today and clear of the Holy. Uh, we, we saw St. John the Baptist, and we also have the Annunciation of the Holy Virgin Mary. That's why she said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. She called herself the maid. She said, I'm serving the Lord, and I'll be obedient. And so now she says, You want to call me? I am the maid servant. After this point, now that I know the call, it's very clear. Now I'm the maidservant of the Lord. It was revealed to her, this new. And what, how does she know? All generations from them will call me blessed. Yes, we do that. We say all the time. And hail to you, Mary. We say, how do you know? Because the revelation came. It, it was clear to her. Um, not Her purpose in human history. This is, this is what happens when we are obedient to the call of God. Um, she also used the same words of um, Hannah, uh, modified, because she studied the calls of the people, the holy people of God, and something with Hannah resonated with her. She didn't know, maybe later, she's a type. <laughs> she was typified of all those people that were pointing to her. And the same thing for all the people in Scripture and the saints that we love, right? They are in a way shaped help us, our identity and their prayers also guide us the response to the call speak lord for your servant is listening so then we see the characteristics if we have time uh, well, i'll go through some of these <laughs> not all of them but i uh, wanted to see some of the characteristics that you see in the book of nehemiah how he fulfills for a servant 
to the call of God. The first thing um, is that there's no joking uh, when it comes to mission and purpose, right? And it wasn't wishy-washy, it wasn't haphazard. It's very clear what he has to do. Um, he didn't lie or hide. He didn't uh, complain uh, to the king <laughs> about what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he didn't try to force someone else, just like David, right? They were all very clear to identify, this is my call. And I think the great leaders, when you look, the great leaders were the same. Like someone else goes, well, I just do this instead. He said, no, this is, if this is my call, I, I, will, fulfill, I will fulfill it. Um, uh, okay. Um, he didn't, uh, he couldn't hide even his emotions from the king, which was dangerous. Like they could, the king in those days, <laughs> get rid of him, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's not smiling. <laughs> That's it. Because <laughs> then it also reflects, that means you're not happy to be in the presence of the king. So, okay, there's other people. <laughs> no problem. So he couldn't hide it. And that's why he said, I had never been sad in his presence before. He knew there was something wrong. And the amazing thing that he had favor with the king, the king was not supposed to say, what can I do for you? He was supposed to say, no, you're supposed to do your job. <laughs> and almost the point where the king, like anything he asks, that's the grace that God gives him in the sight of the king. So when you know you have your purpose, like sky's the limit. This is, uh, you're not doing, I'm not like to see what I want. To, to where do I want to live? <laughs> no, it's not about like his desire. It's about fulfilling the task that he was here for. Clarity of purpose, clarity of mission, clarity of, of time and energies. Um, the second thing was the empathetic heart. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's Dutch. <laughs> um, uh, last time they asked uh, for this was in Netherlands. So I had to put some of the verses. So if you read Dutch, <laughs> you can follow along in the Dutch. <laughs> for me, there's very simple. Sim sim <laughs> so it was when I heard these words, I sat down and I wept and I mourned. For many days I was fasting and praying. And so Nehemiah's name means God's comforts or God consoles and, or, and comforted by God. So, but the comfort that God used for the people of Israel in this time was Nehemiah. So he knows, I'm going to comfort God. That's why the names, especially in the days of old, were very particular. Like you see today, his name is called John. Why? Because John represents the grace and kindness of God that will come in the age of the New Testament. So he is to announce that. And so the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That grace is announcing the truth, the way, the truth, the life, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he knows where I'm situated by name, by identity. I know my task, right? If someone says you're the Christ, he said, no, I'm not the Christ. So say you're not important, he said, no, I'm not, I'm not here either. I know what I'm supposed to do, and it's a very important task. Um, <coughs> the, uh, he also is educated, meaning he searches out the um, city of Jerusalem. Do you know the first thing that he did when he arrived? I don't know if I have it here. Yes. Yes, the night rider. This was the work. Why did he go at night? Yeah, why not in the morning? It's easier to survey in the morning. Yes, and? You're right. Although he doesn't mind that they know what he's doing. What? They could have attacked. There's no walls. Here's another reason. There's nobody that like... Uh, do you know what he does? It took all night. It doesn't take all night to ride around the city. But it took Nehemiah all night. He was praying and weeping. But he was also studying each... Like the other people, even if they were around him, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> What's wrong with here? What about this part? It's like, no, no, no. He wanted God to guide him and explained to him this, and he needed to know all the details. Why? Because if anyone asks him a question about anything else, he's, he's going to answer. He said, no, no, I know there's a hard part over here. This part is not that bad. So if other people were trying to give their impression, he, he needs to have the experience. And that experience, like I said, personally reviewing the wall, some say that they, uh, he took three days 
uh, to do so. Um, uh, okay. So he, he went out, we know, and the place where he went and also was searching for the, the solutions. He also could probably assess how much time roughly it was going to take. He did a lot of calculations, <laughs> Nehemiah. It's like, like, you know, when you s get a very good contractor, sometimes you get a contractor, they have no idea how long it's going to take. <laughs> they're gonna do, and they just kinda, but the, the one who really knows, you be like, no, no, this is very bad. This is going to take a little. And this, you know, you have a problem here with the walls. We have to do one, two, and three. So, like, when he, it's, he has that experience, he's able to make the good assessment. And that was part of this. He was making a thorough, it's like x-ray. <laughs> and even in the service, we need the same thing. Like, if we have a problem, like, yeah, we have a problem. What's the problem? Jerusalem on fire. <laughs> okay. Uh, w what do we do? I don't know, but it's on fire. <laughs> okay, how long is it going to take? I don't know, but it's on fire. <laughs> right? We have sometimes the service. <laughs> it's just a big problem. <laughs> but solutions or the reason why it's there, who are the people that can help, what's the plan that we can take, those are the concrete steps that differentiated Nehemiah. And there were people who were living there, right? For, for a long time, and they didn't, that, uh, that, that was it. <laughs> so sometimes we're living in the problem. We want to see, okay, how can we uh, be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves? And how can we uh, find, discover the solutions? Um, I was looking, uh, I was, uh, the, the last couple of days and I was uh, talking to when I was thinking to present on this, um, but it's coming. The, the, the age, the generation shift that we are, entering in now is very complicated and it's not like before like in the previous generations it was kind of i think easier <laughs> i think easier maybe not, but kind of to figure out what was needed like i was reading in the time of habib Girgis and when they established the sunday school they kind of figured out yeah we need sunday school sunday school was like uh started in the 1700s in britain then came here in america and then habib Girgis studied it so it was like 100 years. So after 200 years of the Sunday school, he, God gave him the vision to see, yeah, this is something good. Let, we need to use it. And they fought him for most of his life um, until, as, as you know, and there's a nice book here about, uh, about it, um, about the process. But the idea behind it is now if we look at the needs, it's a little, much more challenging because we have a lot of the structure <laughs> in place. But how to meet the needs that are there it is you have to at least for me maybe it's easier for you to identify but there's a lot of books there's a lot of articles a lot of examples there's a lot of alternatives there's different problems at the same time not just one major problem uh, if you look at the end of the book of nehemiah th he after like building the wall there's still other internal problems that he kind of goes to and they're much smaller but here you know i feel it's probably different like you have different fires and different enemies all at the same time and trying to maneuver with the, the uh, say, the uh, bricks and, 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 and soldiers and servants that you have. So it's a little bit mud and it needs a lot more um, study and reflection to figure out what to do. It can't be has haphazard. Just like, okay, if you were going to build a wall and you have the bricks, it's not that complicated, right? <laughs> you have, but brick by brick. When you're building the church, like you have now, oh, oh, there's a problem here with the plumbing and the light and the street, and it's it's much more complicated, right? And if you're building a, a factory or a very sophisticated, you know, uh, say, in, in, I was in D.C. last week in the Pentagon, there's a build, very complicated how they build those military, um, I wasn't in the Pentagon, I was next to the Pentagon, <laughs> but very complicated when you're building in certain areas, um, so, so I feel that's where we are kind of heading, and it needs a lot of like um, awareness of what we are doing, what we are saying. Um, so let each one examine his own work, and then he shall will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. So this is this is just to see how our work. Um, when it's examined properly, will bring forth joy. Motivated by Matanya, what do I mean? Like this is, I think, the essence uh, when we feel why we are serving. 
why we like someone asked you why do you serve why do you spend all this time in the service say i like it it's very nice it keeps me busy <laughs> they have nice meetings with good breakfast <laughs> We're not going to think, right? That's not why we say, that's not why we serve, right? They get a title, get communion early. <laughs> There's no benefit sometimes later. <laughs> no, it's hard work, right? And the labor that we do, we know why, because it's related to our salvation and also leads to the salvation of others. Nehemiah was focused on the repentance of the people of God because he knew the destruction that they faced was because they went astray. And hit part of his weeping and mourning and fasting was for the people of Israel because he knew that was the problem. Because he was motivated by repentance, he led the people of Israel to repentance. And when we read too, he leads all of us. He said, oh, he's a good leader. What am I doing in my service? Like when you look at Nehemiah, he did, he did all of this. Like, we, I don't know how many days, weeks you spend in, like, like Nehemiah. We say, well, maybe we didn't do that before. <laughs> But Nehemiah was, he saw a problem, he said, okay, this one needs fasting and prayer and weeping. Like one of the youth, sometimes if we know the, the details of their problem, yeah, we will be weeping and praying for them. I remember once when I was serving and w one of the priests told me, he said, by the way, all of them need that type. Uh, I said, what do you mean? They, they're good. Like <laughs> they're coming to church. <laughs> they, they respond to the lesson. Um, so then when I started to look like in the visitations, we realized, yeah, there's a lot that we didn't see, we didn't know about, right? Um, because they cover sometimes these challenges, they cover very well. So the servant needs to know, needs to know, uh, and is and is praying and beseeching God for them, um, and for their people. Intercessor, this is obvious. You can't read the book of Nehemiah without seeing the prayers from the very beginning. Though, um, the first thing he did was praying even before he responds to the king he is praying um, when he reaches jerusalem he is praying when the walls are built he is praying and these prayers um like you see you see see both i and my father's house have sinned we have departed from you and have not kept the commandments the statutes nor the ordinances which you command your servant moses all of this i t i told you he identified the problem the cause and he didn't necessarily give a sermon, says, oh, you people, you're bad and you sinned, and that's why we're in this place and the walls are burning. Why don't you just wake up and change your life and, you know, we'll be happy for us and for our future. He instead turned in a very unique way. Like I said, he was repenting for the sake of the people. And I think that was also as well, um, it was known, right? Because when Nehemiah... Is, is repenting and someone tried to comfort him he says but we sinned he said what do you mean you, what did I do <laughs> so he's, he will explain to them they didn't realize right they don't realize this destruction was coming because of their actions and so again that was part uh, of his uh, service um, and then He'll say, remember, I pray you what you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, even if you are dispersed, be to the farthest part of heaven, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I've chosen as a dwelling for my name. Nehemiah, you, you, this is familiar, right? Nehemiah is presenting the promise that God had. God said, yes, I will scatter you. So some people just focus on the first part. Yes, we are condemned because we sinned. I know that. But the second part was equally important. He said, but wait a second. If we return, then you promise to rebuild. Like, this is your promise. So he said, okay, I'm repenting for the people, and I'm doing my work as much as possible to have the people of Israel repent. But for the rebuilding, he said, that's your part. Like, like we, you said, you will do this work. If we return, the rest is on you. <laughs> and so this, by this promise, it gave hope to all of, not just to Nehemiah, but all the people. So Nehemiah was an instrument of hope. That's why, again, why he comforted his people with the hope. He says, don't worry, this is the promise of God. Um, God bless you. Okay, um, I won't go through all the prayers. Um, let's go through the active part. Um, there's not just prayer, but um, quiet work. Um, he said, 
I told no one that what my God put in my heart for me to do for Israel. Nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. So this is when he was, he said, I didn't tell anyone what I was doing <laughs> on purpose, right? That's why he went at night. Um, and the sentries, the sentries, they were the Jewish leaders. Uh, they supervised the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Um, so even those people, like the policemen, the officers, didn't know what I was doing either. And I didn't tell the priests or the nobles. He's, he's emphasizing this, right? Sometimes you get excited from a service and say, I'm going to do this service. And we're going to do this. He said, wait, the time is for that, but I have to do my homework first. <laughs> and I have to see how big is this problem and what are the solutions before I tell the people, because even though God had put it in his heart. And this, like I said, is it shows the wisdom um, and how that uh, he is gathering and meeting and working, um, but with very clear intention. Um, sometimes in the service we're reactive, but Nehemiah is very proactive. He has the vision forward looking not just in the present, not just in the past. Um, and so this allows him uh, to, uh, to anticipate uh, the problem. So he knew when Sanballat and the others were kind of attacking him, he knew that was going to come, right? And But he didn't realize, too, there was a time where it was completely stopped. Like, they had to stop all the work. Um, and it was, it, it, but he still, he didn't, he didn't give up uh, and he didn't uh, get discouraged, but it was part of the service, right? You, you serve, you go move on a little bit. And then there's a big challenge that comes. We have to st pause and wait, kind of like in the building, and kind of like even with the with the in the youth, the same thing. It's natural. It's normal. Why? Because when you're building a church, when you are saving souls, the tax must come. <laughs> Not maybe will come. They must come. <laughs> that means if we are doing uh, kind of uh, as Abu Nusra Kamal used to say, that's the sign that we're doing our work correctly, right? So if they don't, and they just say good things about you, then woe to you, right? Then there's something wrong. <laughs> it is just good that's coming. Um, uh, so this is uh, how uh, that we build actively, um, and uh, uh, we try to finish our work, right? <laughs> Not to be like the, someone says, okay, we have these big plans, and then by the end of the year, or by the the Coptic year, because you have one year for your class, sometimes you have third and fourth, so then it's like a year and year and a half. Um, how that we um, are able to accomplish, right, the goals that we set, practical goals for that time. Like we tell them, we want them to memorize the creed, and then they finish the whole year, they didn't memorize the creed. We want them to learn the hymns, and then, then you know, the, the general goals without being very specific within the, the class or even within a retreat or like the objectives that we have have to be uh, examined very, very carefully. I know, I don't know how you do with your, but at least like once a year when you plan either the end of the year or the beginning of the Coptic year and you will put your objectives for the service. You have your personal objectives. The difference with this, the servant is that there's a whole list <laughs> in the service, right? And so when you do your personal evaluation and how you fast and repent and pray and virtues and all of that, then you also do for the service and you see, well, did we do this service? Because I prayed before, God put on my heart to do this task. At the end of one year, two years, did, it, did we actually do it or no? Like sometimes I, I write, failed <laughs> or we started or I'll put it by color. Like, say, okay, the past green, you can cross it out, or yellow, it's almost there. It may take another year. I should have been, I thought it would be finished, but it's not finished. And then something that's red, like it needs attention. And we just keep praying. I don't know, uh, but we keep trying. Okay, this didn't work last year. Maybe we try something. Uh, this. So the servant is evaluating, just like Nehemiah was going, and he was reviewing that wall. He knew what it looked like from the beginning. He memorized it. <laughs> He had this, so as it's growing, he could see and he put a plan. He's like, no, this is not how I envisioned it. Just like the good contractor, he said, oh, they made a mistake here, stop working, <laughs> right? Until we can fix, because if they build in the wrong way on top, it's, and we've had that happen, unfortunately, in other places, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good, but sometimes it has to be done, right? So the servant is con continually evaluating 
the, the, the service. Um, so we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind uh, to work. Okay, um, uh, go through the last part, which is the example. Um, and I think one of the best things for Nehemiah, which how the holy example that he gave for each of the servants, right? He's not um, an emotional leader. He has emotion. We see him weeping. We see him yelling. We see him directing people. So it's not like he is, you know, emotionless. <laughs> but he, he he's not moved by emotion only. Like he's very clear what he has to do. And when someone is wrong, he will tell them, this is wrong. We can't do it. Like when they were uh, exacting... Um, uh, they were giving loans to other people with high interest. He said, what are you doing? This is wrong. You can't do this. Even it's mentioned in the scripture and the other people, like more than the banks, <laughs> more than that. He's like, this is wrong. You can't do this, right? So when he f saw that something was wrong within his brother, he, he made it very clear so that they could move uh, forward. Um, and when do you see him shine most is in the obstacles, when the obstacles come, not when everything is good and like everyone's happy. It's when the challenges come. So, and that's when the servants of the church shine. May the Lord bless us with every spiritual blessing. Glory be to none of into the age of all ages. You have any questions? I'm going to read Nehemiah tonight and tomorrow. We can do two days. Two days or one day? <laughs> 13. But I don't know. Some, when the more that I read it now, the slower I, I get. But I remember in the beginning, starting to serve, we read it very fast. <laughs> now it's like I can't get through a chapter. <laughs>